This is African American History is American History. Welcome. I'm your host, Harlan Kearsley. This program's goal is to foster understanding, promote discussion, and expand knowledge through stories of historical events, bios of unsung heroes, as well as timely and relevant news stories which, hopefully, will paint a vivid picture of the effects of segregation, discrimination, and bigotry on the lives of both blacks and whites. Comparisons will be made between the many racially fractured periods of American history and what's going on right now. Now, I'm sure it will come as no surprise that in the 1930s and 1940s, prejudice was standard practice for advertising agencies. An African American during that time, no matter how qualified, found that getting hired to work in mainstream advertising for general market companies was difficult, to say the least. Most ad agencies restricted the hiring of black professionals to low level positions. This restrictive hiring practice discouraged African Americans from even applying for mainstream advertising jobs, which in turn created a vicious cycle of a lack of hiring. Ebony and its sister magazine Jet not only created work for black journalists, but also black owned ad agencies headed by Don Draper esque ad men like the award winning George Olden and Vince Cullors, who founded his own advertising firm and became one of the leaders of the black advertising agency sector in the 1960s and 70s. These ads would never be seen in the mainstream white media, but the marketing returns were nevertheless explosive for companies, giving rise to an invisible golden age for targeted black advertising. This is African American History is American History. Cigarette companies were among the first to work with black publications, and once the barriers were reluctantly broken, tobacco giants began aggressively targeting black Americans who at the time were smoking much less than white Americans. Alcohol, beverages, cosmetics, and automobile brands soon followed suit. But across the board, advertisements were generally a cut-and-paste job, meaning that the ads placed in Ebony and Jet were often created as white targeted campaigns, given no special creative attention other than replacing white faces with black ones. By the early 1950s, more than 40 black men were employed by American corporations in what were called, quote, Negro markets, end quote. A few, like Moses Kendrick of Coca-Cola, actually helped to create advertising approaches to blacks in 1954. Much of the time, their work consisted of keeping straight-up racism out of the ads. A black pioneer, David J. Sullivan, ran his own consulting firm on Fifth Avenue in the 1940s called Negro Market Organization. His Do's and Don'ts articles in the trade press spotlighted offensive marketing. No black ad men held a significant position in a major white agency until 1952, when another pioneer, Clarence Holt, was hired by BBDNO as head of their Negro Markets division. Holt became the first black professional hired in a significant executive position at a leading New York agency. This is African American History is American History. Graphic designer George Eliot Olden is regarded as one of the pioneering blacks in television and advertising. Working at CBS, Olden helped to create the visual identities of shows such as Gunsmoke, I Love Lucy, Omnibus, and Lassie. 
He helped produce the vote tallying scoreboard for the first televised presidential election returns. George Eliot Olden was born in Birmingham, Alabama on November 13, 1920. His father, James Clarence Olden, was a Baptist minister, and his mother, Sylvia Ward Olden, was a music teacher. Olden joined BBDNO in 1960, where he was involved in all elements of commercial production. He won several Clio Awards, the Oscars of the ad industry, and is said to have been the designer of the Clio statuette. In 1963, Olden became the first African American to design a postage stamp for the United States Postal Service. The design commemorated the centennial of the Declaration of the Emancipation Proclamation. It had a simple design of a broken chain in black on a blue background. He attended a White House ceremony where the stamp was introduced by President John F. Kennedy. Olden worked with the National Urban League and designed the organization's symbol. But despite his position at McCann Erickson, he tended to avoid pressing racial issues or persuading firms to hire blacks, saying only that, quote, acceptance into the industry is a matter of talent, end quote. In 1963, Olden told Ebony Magazine, Quote, in my work, I've never felt like a Negro. Maybe I've been lucky. End quote. However, in 1970, he sued his former employer, McCann Erickson, for wrongful termination caused by discrimination. He cited that the dissolution of the Professional Advisory Council, or PAC, of which he was a member, was a conscious decision to not allow him to move up in the company, therefore keeping him at the level in which he joined the company. McCann argued that Olden never requested a transfer out of PAC into a position that would lead to greater promotion within the company. In 1972, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission found reasonable cause that the company practiced discriminatory hiring but did not find reasonable cause on behalf of Olden. After moving to Los Angeles, California, Olden started a class action lawsuit against McCann Erickson for discrimination on behalf of himself and other black designers who were victims of discrimination. However, on February 25, 1975, at only 54 years old, Olden was shot to death by his white living girlfriend, Irene Mikoychik. She was arrested and tried a few days before the class action lawsuit was scheduled to begin. Mikoychik pleaded not guilty and was acquitted in court. This is African American History is American History. While pressure in the late 1960s and the 1970s from people like George Olden forced some change, to this very day, blacks still remain underrepresented among ad executives. The good news is the advertising industry will go proactive regarding racial issues, but only if it's forced to. To learn more about racism in the world of advertising, I suggest you read Madison Avenue and the Color Line, African Americans in the Advertising Industry, by Jason Chambers. This has been African American History is American History. The episode you've been listening to, Black Ad Men, a brief look at black pioneers in marketing and advertising, was written and directed by Harlan Kearsley. I'm Harlan Kearsley, and on behalf of everyone here at African American History is American History. Thank you for listening. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe. Once you do, You'll be notified as soon as new episodes are posted. Thanks again, and please 
Stay safe. African American history is American history. Copyright H.C. Kearsley, 2023.